And welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for a brand new format. That's right, if you uh, haven't found out yet, this today, uh, earlier, we had the new BNR announcement and we had three cards banned in standard. Um, Oko, Thief of Crowns is gone, Veil vale of Summer, and Once Upon a Time. So those cards are no longer legal. Um, so we have an exciting new format here today, but we are going to be playing uh, in best of one because it is best of one day Monday. And I kind of asked some people on Discord um, if they want me to go straight into best of three with the new format and stuff. But um, people were like, no, let's stick with best of one for today because, you know, we'll be doing best of three all the other days and um, the bands take effect in best of one. Anyway, so we have uh, some, some different decks that we're going to be playing here today. Plus, we have a donation deck for Boros Knights. That's going to be best of three anyway. All right, so first up, we're going to try some Simic Wishes. So this deck, um, as you all know, this was one of the first decks that I played in um, in this format anyway, like where we're just uh, trying to ramp into Cavalier of Thorns and Nyssa and just get a whole lot of mana, um, then play large Hydroid Crisis, and then also have Fey of Wishes, because you know how powerful this card is in Best of One, because usually in Best of One you don't have access to a sideboard, uh, but now we will have access to a sideboard, um, thanks to Fey of Wishes. Plus we can also just play this as a 2-mana 1-4 against aggro decks as well, and that's just a pretty good blocker. So no Oko anymore, no Once Upon a Time. Uh, instead of Once Upon a Time, we're playing Paradise Druids, get like an extra ramp creature. This will also be interesting to see how Gilded Goose plays with no Oko. Um, you know, it only basically adds the mana the one time. Still with best of one, uh, especially with no Oko here today, I'm expecting a lot of aggro. And so Gilded Goose is, should still be pretty good against aggro anyway, of just being able to make us some food tokens to be able to gain life also. Um, and then the other card that you see here that's different that, you know, maybe kind of taking that Oko slot, I'm going to be playing Shifting Ceratops in the main because I'm expecting a lot of Simic Flash today. Um, so if, especially, yeah, with like the Veil of Summer band and everything, I think people are going to be excited about playing uh, Simic Flash. And I want to try to um, counter their counter spells by um, playing the Shifting Ceratops. <clears throat> and anyway, it's just a, a pretty decent curve filler. You know, it's a good blocker against aggro and, you know, can have trample to help you win races and things like that. So it just kind of fits in the four slot, four mana slot on the curve anyway. Um, so yeah, let's give that a try. Also going to try a Great Henge because uh, Cavalier Thorns and the Great Henge are both definitely better when they're not Elks. This can help us gain that life against aggro. Um, and it, it plays very well with Cavalier of Thorns ramping up and making it pretty easy to cast also. All right, and then, you know, we got our sideboard filled with um, awesome spells. Oh, I'm going to replace Fabled Passage in the sideboard with um, Blast Zone. The reason to have, like, the land in the sideboard is if we have four mana, but we don't have a fifth, if we don't have a fifth land, but we're sitting on, like, Cavalier Thorns and Nissa's, we can, you know, cast Fey of Wishes, get that fifth mana, and then play these. But I also want a Blast Zone because of um, probably an uptick in, like, Witches Oven decks, and uh, Blast Zone can just clear out a bunch of Witches Ovens. So that's also an option there. All right. So Simic Wishes, let's try some Best of One magic. Let's see what happens here with this new format. We're going to be playing uh, seven games over in Ranked. And let's have some fun. All right, I'm going to update the deck list command. To take out, let's take out this Fabled Passage. And add a Blast Zone. All right, turn three Nissa. All right, that's updated. <laughs> hey, what's up, blind? All the cards I never played got banned. So many free wild cards. There you go. Turn three, Nissa. 
of how good at magic we are. Behold, nature's true power. Let's see. <clears throat> Uh, ring theory, uh, it's something that may help you out, just kind of in general, um, if you know if you, if you haven't really played Magic for the last 10 years. Um, kind of look through the level 1 articles on Wizard site there, written by Reed Duke, and there could just be some, you know, it's, it's about 4 years old now, but still it's just a whole lot of good uh, Magic theory and everything that could help you out. Ooh, what a great turn for my opponent. That was that was an awesome turn, that rampage. Good job, good job. Um So I could So playing Ceratops would be better cuz yeah, if they didn't if they didn't do that, we were going to be winning. So that that was a great turn for them. Good job. Um if I play Shifting Ceratops that gives me two blockers for the Stormfist Crusader. I can't give it haste. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. You played three opponents so far, and they were all playing Rakdos aggro. Yeah, makes sense. Aggro gained a lot. That's that's probably like just the date. You know, this is day one. You know, hour. You know, like hour one or whatever. Or, you know, like one of, the, one of the first hours, like easy thing to to just jump in with. Well then. Hey, Aguanaba. Yeah, they always do that if um, if they do ban anything. Um, they always announce like a statement. They talk about it. What? Why they changed anything they changed. So I don't have don't have anything that costs one mana to go. Basically, all I have to do is survive this turn, and the Stormfist Crusader is going to kill my opponent. So it's either play a 1-4 blocker or gain 3 life with a food. And I think I want to gain 3 life with a food. Yeah. 
Uh, Adventure decks lost power without Once Upon a Time for sure. Like Once Upon a Time was really, really strong in those decks. Um, and I do not think we will see less main deck removal for Innkeeper. I think we're going to see more main deck removal um, because I think aggro decks are going to be more popular, so you need more cheap interaction. So that also hurts Adventure decks. But Edge Hall Innkeeper does a great job of grinding through removal just as a card design. So Edge Wall Innkeeper decks are good against removal. Okay. So they're going to be able to do six damage to me. They needed, like, they needed uh, three instant speed damage. I mean, we'll still even, no, because then, then I have the Ceratops to kill them. Yes, yeah, so they were, they are in a pretty tough spot there. All right, we're one no. <laughs> I'm playing a Simic deck, and I got zero of the cast twenty blue spells. So much for my my deck being Simic. <laughs> Whoops. Hmm. On the draw, I would definitely mulligan this. I think I, I kind of want to just keep it on the play, though. I mean, if they kill Gilded Goose, it's basically dead. I and mean, we. Ugh. Let's give it a try. I, I will definitely be playing Historic starting the 21st whenever they add the new cards to Historic and also have, like, Historic events and have ranked Historic. Stuff like that. So yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be diving into historic and playing a good amount. Um, Cause yeah, that sound that looks like a a fun format to play, especially with the new cards. I think they did a really good job um, with the additions to historic. I I like the cards they chose to add. Oh yeah, definitely greedy keep. All right, Temple of Scryumph. Probably a Jeskai deck. This is a Good hand against Jeskai decks. <laughs> I will not be happy until Battle of Wits is added. Man, that's a long time of not being happy. I, I think you should still just be happy. And then be ecstatic if Battle of Wits is added. Boo, Bone Crusher Giant. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I haven't I haven't actually I haven't tried out historic yet, but I'm I'm excited to try it out later on during the week and everything. The reason why I've overgrown tomb in kind of randomly in my Simic deck, there's two overgrown tombs, um, basically instead of forests, that uh, help me cast the Unmoored Ego in the sideboard. You know that can pair with Paradise Druid and Gilda Goose. We can also cast it. Yeah, mono green stompy and historic. Yeah, you have the eight. Yeah, you have eight one mana mana dorks and once upon a times, you're just gonna always have turn two steel leaf champion. Yeah, hit at Sugo's second right. That's a fun one. That
Mm. Ceratops is not bad. It's not bad at... Yeah, let's keep it. We got the Greyhenge out here. Let's keep this. It's good at pressuring Planeswalkers. And I, I don't want to trade here, because if they have a Teferi and bounce my the Greyhenge, then I can um, have Ceratops attack Teferi and give it Trample at that point. So I don't want to necessarily just trade immediately there. All right, so good start with for them having their fires on turn four and having fate of witches and stuff. Definitely a good start. Um. That hurts. So basically what I was going to be able to do if they didn't have that, but they did, my plan was to Fae of Wishes for my Negate and be able to hold up Negate with the Paradise Druid, but I only have one blue mana now, so I can't really Fae for Negate. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Hydroid Crisis. It's not really a land drop, though. Hey, what's up, Matu? Welcome from Argentina. I guess I could have fave wished for Unmoored Ego also and taken casualties of war that way. Obviously, Nissa would have been better to play before Cavalier. Like, I could have played Nissa plus Cavalier, but there's not, not really a reason to get Nissa out into play before Casualties of War. Just have five mana. Thinking about putting Cavalier of Thorns back. Yeah, we're going to do that. The problem with casting Cavalier of Thorns here, though, is that it gets rid of that Krasis that's going to be there. But I do just need more mana. And I, I don't love just dropping... Don't love just playing Nissa, cause. Um, hey, thanks, Aguanaba. Extending that sub, thank you so much. I don't. The problem with this, so like, I don't really want to like Nissa and then tick up Nissa. 
they could kill they could kill lands very easily. I don't know, this is going to be kind of tough. Thanks, Aguanaba. <laughs> yeah, my opponent does like to take their time. For sure. There's no clock on best of one. This is going to be a little tough to try to beat this captive audience. Mm. Well, that looks like that's game. And they, they could have just played the Fae of Wishes and pumped three times. My plan was probably to go grab Flooded Tears from the sideboard. I think that was my plan. Like, next turn, give them give them a bunch of zombies. And then go grab Flooded Tears. But... Oh, well, that was just awesome hand for our opponent. And they took it down. Uh, the bands are good because people are more, ex more excited to play and everything, so. I mean, I think that, like, Oko should not have been printed as it was. Yeah, basically, the, all the, the cards they ban is very reasonable to ban them. Looks like another fires deck.
use the ties that bind us all. The land fights for us. So I, I could just untap a forest though there, you know, attack for three and then play shifting ceratops. But really my opponent's gonna need a sweeper and so to deal with these cavalier thorns, there's not really a reason to um to do that. To just kinda expose any of my cards to a, a sweeper here. Hey, what's up, real smoif? Yeah, Oko is gone. Underestimate my fortitude. All right, so we got a lot of mana this time. There's so many so many ways to do this. All right, so I'm just going to get Nissa up to 8 and ult Nissa. Put a lot of force into play. That should be pretty good moving forward. Now we're like out of lands. So that Fae of Wishes let us ult Nissa and put a Hydro Crisis in our hands. That's pretty good. All right, so more Cavalier great. More Cavalier of Gales. Okay. That time we had an awesome hand. <laughs> More like Cavalier of Gales. All right, we finally cast a blue spell. It's just our third game. We finally cast our first blue spell. Finally. Yeah, I mean this is yeah, this is a, a new standard format without Toko. I guess that's that's what I mean, like yeah, a new format. It's a it's a different standard now. Yeah, we played we played three games and we've cast, cast one blue spell now. All 
I have a lot of blue spells in the deck. And by a lot, I mean four. I guess only three Fae of Wishes, but then four Krasis, four Risen Reef. And then a bunch of stuff in the sideboard. So I think my plan is next turn shifting Ceratops, and then the following turn Great Henge plus Leafkin Druid. I think it's the easiest to get Great Henge in play if we play shifting Ceratops the next turn, because of course against a red deck that's that's all we, we want this out as early as possible and gaining two life a turn means that if, if they just go Bone Crusher Giant this turn and then I play Ceratops then they attack with Bone Crusher Giant I'm not going to be blocking because we need to untap with the dinosaur. Yeah, I think it's definitely reasonable for once upon a time to to get banned as well. Uh, it just gave green decks a ton of consistency, allowed them to be really greedy playing four colors very easily. Um, basically, spells that cost zero mana, they should probably stop printing things that cost zero mana. Hey, what's up, comics and collectibles? Thank you so much for that resub. It's our fourth sub of the day. Hmm. Well, don't get to play the Great Henge because we don't have mana. Yeah, it's kind of for every every format. Casting stuff for free is a problematic mechanic. That's why, yeah, I mean, so I'm not a big fan of, like, the design of Fires of Invention or the design of Wilderness Reclamation. Like, Wilderness Reclamation doesn't let you cast stuff for free, but it, if you're just playing instants, you get to, you know, double your mana every turn. I'm not a big fan of those kind of card designs. Like, if, if they would just ban Wilderness Reclamation, even though, you know, I'm not saying it's it's so good that it has to be banned or anything like that, but if they did, I, I would be, I would be happy. Never liked that card. But once upon a time, same kind of thing. Like, you know, it's just cost zero mana to give you just a ton of consistency. Um, helps the other colors. A lot more than it helps um, and so like basically kind of kind of even getting rid of once upon a time kind of evens the playing field between green and other colors some yeah free wild cards today if you had any of those cards <laughs> you'd be fine with them banning like six to ten there's like six or ten different cards you don't mind them banning in standard. Yeah, there's there's been there's been some annoying ones though, which they didn't print. Alright, so now we can trade. Um so here it's like take four or just chump. No, we gotta take four. I guess no, I should have chomped because Ember Cleave. Ember Cleave would have just killed me. I should have chomped there. I should have blocked both of them. Yeah, I should have blocked because I would have just died to Ember Cleave. I thought I thought not blocking because we play Risen Reef. We get more we get four blockers. But no, I should I should have just 
Um, I should have just blocked the first time. Yeah. Come on. Oh, I guess I guess I should shock cuz if I shock I can Well, now I could have played that paradise druid. But if I shocked, I could have I could have just sacked this food, so I could basically just gain a life to go to eleven. Because all I need to do is stay alive, right? And they're just going to get completely ran over. All I have to do is just stay alive. So so paying the two life, I could have actually gained you know then gained three, so I could have gained one life. All right, three and one. Cavalier Thorns looking good. We got two blue spells now. First time playing that, uh, playing a Risen Reef. So like right now I'm leading with this, so turn two Leafkin Druid, turn three. I could go Paradise Druid plus Gilded Goose. But I also just I just want to draw lands. But if I put it to the bottom and then just draw expensive spells, that's gonna be a lot worse for me. Well, I guess technically I could just leave with this. It's going to be easier to untap with this, I suppose. So hopefully this is land. Looks like I could have put that Paradise Druid down to the bottom because there was just another one up next. So basically just leading with the Cavalier of Thorns so we have a good blocker for this questing beast.
That hurts. I can go Krasis for six here. Or I could play Nissa and Krasis for five. I will protect the virtue of this world. The land shall conquer you. So might as well get Nissa in play if we gain one less life and draw one less card. But of course we have Nissa in play now. Yep. Yeah, getting Nissa in play is probably more important than one more life and one more card. So I'm guessing my opponent has Embercleave. They just said good game. So Embercleave is lethal. Questing Beast. Questing Beast with cards like Colossus and Embercleave. Still pretty busted. Alright, so we're 3 and 2. Hey, what's up, Borderan? So we're going to be playing two more games here before we move on to our next deck. Yeah, Trample and Death Touch. That's that's the thing. Trample plus Death Touch. So I'm gonna keep the Leafkin Druid because it can add double, you know, it can add two mana. So I'll keep that over keeping Paradise Druid. Plus, if we draw Risen Reef, that could be even better. Why did the ban out go? Um, so that's that's one of the announcements here. I think there's yeah, there you go. There's there's a link. There you go. There's the second one there that um, gives you the the why. You know, they kind of tell you why they made the changes they made. Um. This means that if they have Okay. I led with that as a better blocker, even though that meant that if they had or like if I drew Risen Reef this next turn, you know, I wouldn't be able to get the bonus off Risen Reef. But if they just played like a Paradise Druid, you know, played like something like that that pumped Pell Collector's power one and made Pell Collector a two two, we had a blocker for it, where Paradise Druid would not really be a blocker for it. I like getting the temple, but I think we're supposed to just get all the forest we can with Nissa. No, I don't think this deck would would benefit with Leyline of Abundance. I mean, I mean, it, if you have it in play and you have all the mana creatures and everything, 
or even just like a Nissa, like I guess yes, it, you would be better off. Um, anything good to Fay of Wish for right now? I could like Fay of Wish for Unmoored Ego and cast Unmoored Ego and just name like Ember Cleave. And then they just can't have Ember Cleave. I'll get Nissa in play though. Hmm. Now I wish I had that blue source so I could cast mass manipulation. It's a tough call. Yeah, Finale and Plain White are like, they're pretty powerful, you know, if we untap with Nissa and everything, but I'm kind of worried about untapping with Nissa. If they have, if they have Ember Cleave for Questing Beast, we don't untap with Nissa. So I want something that can, can be decent if we don't untap with Nissa. And that's why I chose the Ugin. Thought about choosing Flood of Tears. Kind of wish I said Flood of Tears. I wish I would have said Flood of Tears. And if they have something great, I'm dead. Obviously. That's something great. Um, nine, ten, eleven. I guess that's only 12 damage. I guess if they attack all out at me, I go to one. Probably should have said Flood of Tears instead of Ugin. That would have just slowed them down a lot. I 
I can't keep my creatures alive. Don't really need to block. Oh. I'm supposed to keep that in hand to bounce Fae of Wishes. That's what I'm supposed to do there. Honestly, maybe I'm not supposed... I don't know. Like, I don't... Like, what am I going to do? Like, so I keep the temp... Actually, I'm glad I played it. To scry for the next turn, because I'm not going to have the mana to... You know, whatever we draw, pay two to discard Fey, and then also go get something with Fey, and then play that thing. I'm not going to have that kind of mana at all. So actually, like... I'm actually glad that I didn't. Okay. The big problem with this Castle Embereth is honestly really making these blocks bad for me. Because otherwise, we would nor I'd normally just have the two three threes double block this Pelt Collector and have my 1-4 and my 2-3 um, kind of uh, double block the 3-3. Three, three. Um, and I'd be able to eat both of those where they only eat one creature. But this Castle Embereth is kind of rough. Um... But I need to, I do need to get rid of this Pelt Collector. So let's see. If, if I still make those blocks, I lose everything except for Paradise Druid. And they lose two creatures. Uh, that's rough. If I just block... Oh my gosh. I guess I need to make my decision a little faster. That hurt. Took too long there. It did not give you very much time. It was a difficult combat. Especially when you're trying to stream and talk about it. So yeah, it just automatically made the blocks there. Ran out of time. That was going to be kind of tough for us to win, but... I mean, I was, like, drawing one Cavalier of Thorns away from stabilizing. So it's not like that game was unwinnable. That's the pri price I pay, though, for streaming and talking about my different lines instead of just making the decisions. Oh, well. Okay, good hand. <laughs> yeah, we've cast cast a bunch of blue spells. So there we go. Having all shock lands against the aggro deck isn't ideal. Isn't ideal at all. Okay. This would be a great time to draw the Great Henge. Question is, how are you feeling about the possibility of new decks? Um, the metagame is going to be different. And I think it will open up more. 
And yes, new, new decks should emerge. Um, and I think that's that's all a good thing. I didn't like the design of Oko at all. And I, I am happy for it to be out of the format. Hey, Flicker Docs, I'm doing great. Doing great. All right, so there's the Great Henge. I mean, <laughs> it's unfortunate. These are all like four cards that would have been good to draw. All four of those. Um, Unfortunately, I don't. I think if Cavalier of Thorns dies, I don't really want to put the Great Henge back on top because then it'll be pretty difficult to cast it. But I could put back Hydroid Crisis on top, or honestly, just another Cavalier. Probably just another Cavalier. No, we can't really kill our own Cavalier. And Cavalier does not get through... It's not like I can attack and pressure their life total because it can't get through Cauldron Familiar at all. So the, the only way it's going to be dying is if they activate Knight of the Ebon Legion. Get Death Touch there or Death Touch on this Foulmire Knight. Why don't you play Steamkin and Chandra Tribal? Because it it turns on the opponent's removal. Um, you know, they have a Bone Crusher Giant. Gives them a good target for it. Or a Shock or you know, something that destroys a creature. So kind of an unlucky Cavalier of Thorns move, you know, Getting rid of these four cards, and now we draw land. It's a little unlucky. That's how it goes, though. Could have been the opposite way, you know. Could have got rid of all the lands and then drawn the spells. It just didn't work out. I don't think Cauldron Familiar needed to be banned at all. I I think it would have been it would be nice if they would have like an auto sack food if they just automatically sacked food. Uh, it, it'd speed up this combo a whole lot. Um, but I understand that's kind of tough when you have cards um, like um, uh, when you have cards like Ginger Brute and Golden Egg and things like that that are food that you can. Um, I should, should probably keep the Overgrown Tomb. Yeah, so anyway, when you have when you have stuff like that that's food, so it's hard to just have a program to automatically sacrifice food. But I wish it would... It could recognize that if you only have food tokens, just sack any of them because they're all the same. Instead of having to choose each time which food to sacrifice. That's fine. I'm not. I'm not casting any black spells. My only black spell is, you know, unmoored ego in my sideboard. I'm not casting unmoored ego this game. So it's it's whatever. I kind of just discarded lands that came into play tapped and kept this island. But I guess I should I should kept keep the forest though, because it doesn't really matter that it comes into play tapped unless we would draw like a crisis that turn. Um, but you know, like with Nissa and everything, it's just better to have. So 
I should just kept one of the forests. Gilded Goose is good, because Gilded Goose, like, that was a good draw. That'll give me enough life to not die to this Cauldron Familiar over time. I'm 0-2 against Gruul so far. Still lost to a couple Gruul decks so far. Today. Well, that's bad. These seven games, I've only played one Risen Reef. I wouldn't be a bad card to draw. Start digging into the deck more. Oh, I meant to block there, too. No, I just played I just played the Gilded Goose. It was summoning sick. I think I just drew it. I couldn't make a food. I should have blocked there. I was just so excited to block that thing. So we can go Krasis for six. I would love to get back the Great Henge. Um, which, you know, we could cast the Great Henge here. What does it cost? Nine mana? But I think it's probably more important to get the Krasis. Um, I don't think I don't think necessarily people will stop mainboarding Ether Gust. I think there's going to be a lot more red and still a good amount of green in the format. I think Ether Gust is is still a a good main deck card, but yeah, we're probably seeing less. Less Noxious Grasp. All right, looking for another Krasis. Fay of Wishes, Cavalier. Mm. That hurts. Mm, that was a good draw.
Nope. Together, we will prevail. I may have one more draw step, I may not. We'll see. I do not. If I attack with the island, they get to do another point of damage with Cauldron Familiar. If I attack with the island, they get to block with Cauldron Familiar and then bring it back with this extra food and, and deal one damage to me and I'm at three. All right, so that was us flooding out way too much, as you could see there. Um, just just drew land drops for our, our draw step was just a land. Almost every draw step of that game was a land. Um, All right, so that was that was Simic Wishes. So we, we ended up going three and four, but um, I mean, I think I think the deck's strong. Like I, I think that uh, you know we had some, you know, not we didn't have the best of luck there, uh, going three and four. You know, just seven games is like all of these are small sample sizes, of course. But I I I think our deck's pretty strong. Um, I was really impressed with the Great Henge. I, I kind of wish we had another the Great Henge in here. Um, that yeah, that card in particular looked really good. Um, I think my sideboard needs to be switched up a little bit with the new meta game. Um, like more dis like basically more disenchant effects. Like I don't really have disenchant effects. Um, But yeah, like that that last game, basically all we could draw were just lands and Leafkin Druids. It's unfortunate, you know, never saw like the Cavalier milled over a whole bunch of things. I didn't like technically really draw that crisis. But yeah, Faye. Faye would have helped out a whole lot. But oh well. Um so yeah, Cyborg probably needs to be updated a little bit. Um Shifting Ceratops was just fine. I think that was a, a pretty good card to have here. Um, you know, it could be Questing Beast also, but I like I like having that can't be countered. We didn't see any Simic Flash, but I think I like having that here. But yeah, I would, I'd be pretty confident in just running this back and having a better record with it. Uh, you know, the, the, some of the games didn't really work out for us. Um, Ember Cleave, yeah, Ember Cleave's a problem. That that was definitely a card that that we struggled with was Ember Cleave. Um, I don't think I really want Brazen Borrower though. Ether Gust is good. I could definitely see having like an Ether Gust in the sideboard at at the very least, uh, and be able to fave for an Ether Gust. That could be pretty nice. I liked Gilded Goose a lot, even though even without Oko. So that you know that was something that we were trying out, seeing how how good Gilded Goose would look without Oko. It still looked very good. Um, but yeah, with a deck with the four Risenry, four Crisis, you wouldn't think that we would struggle with having cards to play. But there's a couple of those games where we did. But then and then otherwise, um, yeah, Questing Beast plus Ember Cleave. That's a tough combo. Okay, anyway, um, that's Simic Wishes. Uh, all right, so if you're watching on YouTube, uh, please hit that like button over there. And, of course, leave some comments of what you're trying out with this new format um, and everything, how, how you like the bands, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just, you know, feel free to leave comments. I always like seeing the comments, and I'll be responding later on off stream. Uh, but thank you so much for watching some Simic Wishes, and I will see you for the next video.